Hi guys, welcome to Drumdog, and today we're going to be checking out the technique for broken 16th simple patterns like this. So first things first, what is a broken 16th pattern and why do we want to play it? Well, if we take our constant group of 16th notes, 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a, and we take out one of those notes per group of four, just like this, 1 E and, 2 E and, 3 E and, 4 E and, we get a broken 16th pattern, which gives us these little bunches of three notes, which can really add a little bit of spice to funk and pop grooves, well, as well as a whole load of other contexts. Now, the challenge with playing these broken 16th patterns, especially when we're playing them in one hand, like we're trying to do here, is that we reach a certain speed when our wrist can't carry us any faster. And as we're playing 16th notes, that speed isn't really that fast. So we're talking one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Which in the grand scheme as a tempo really isn't that high up. So if we want to push this any further to get some slightly more interesting funk grooves going, especially at higher tempos, we're going to have to work out a technique that can carry us up to higher speeds. Today we're going to be checking out how that technique works and then we're going to be using it on the kit in a handful of cool applications. Now this technique is going to use two parts of our hand. It's going to use our fingers for the first two strokes and then it's going to use our wrist for our third stroke. Now if playing finger strokes on their own isn't something that you're comfortable with then I really recommend taking the time to do that on its own before you challenge this. Now if you do want a little bit of help along with that, that is something I've covered in our technique workshop which you can check out here, there is a link in the description. But if you're already feeling comfortable with finger strokes, let's dive into it. So just as I said, we're going to be playing those first two notes of our group of three with just our fingers. Now let's just isolate those on their own for a second. So we're starting here in a down position, nice and close to the pad. All I'm doing is getting my wrist out of the way and playing two little gentle finger strokes. That's all we want to do. Now, as I'm playing on a practice pad here, there is a lot of rebound that's assisting me there. Now, that rebound does let our fingers relax a lot more, but this technique doesn't rely on that rebound entirely. As we are actually playing those notes with our fingers, we can play that on a non-rebound surface. A leg, for example. It's still there. We've got that finger control for both notes. Now, before you go any further, just get used to playing those two notes. Even at a variety of speeds, bring them all the way down, still in full control. And after our two notes, we're just coming back to a resting position in our hand. We're tucking the butt end of that stick back in against our palm and having full control of that stick before we play and after. Now this can be hard at first because this is such a small movement and small motions are a little bit harder to grasp than big ones just because of the subtlety of them. But do really take your time and get a feel for those two strokes at different tempos. Now it's really important that your wrist isn't moving much for this at all, all because of what is going to happen now. So after we've got those two strokes down, we are going to be using our wrist and snapping it down for our third stroke. Now let's check this out as slowly as we can. We've got our two finger strokes and then we're coming in with our wrist for the last one. So this is only a subtle movement of that wrist, but just dropping that wrist gives us that little accent at the end of our group of three, which ties this little technique together. 
So two subtle movements with those fingers and then dropping in that wrist for the third. Now what's really important with this technique and one thing to really keep an eye on is making sure the stick isn't leaving our fingers. The whole way through that, all four of our fingers are in contact with the stick and have full control of it. If you find, especially for the first two notes, if your fingers are coming off the stick and slapping back into it, try to make those movements a little bit smaller and a little bit more relaxed to really let your fingers absorb the shock of the stick and support it along its way instead of kind of slapping it in the right direction where it gets a lot more jerky and we lose that stick control that we need. It is a surprisingly subtle technique that doesn't have a lot of stick height in it at all. As a final note, as well as our wrist dropping for that third note, our fingers do help it along the way to a degree as they snap back in to our resting position. As a final check to make sure this technique's working right for you, you will see your forearm dropping in with that wrist the smallest bit for that last stroke. But for those first two notes, neither your forearm or your wrist should be moving at all. It should be all out in the top end of the hand just with those fingers moving. Until that last note when we get just that little drop. Now once you get the hang of that and you start to relax for those first two notes, with the combination of those two gears, we can actually take this up to a very high speed, which is why it's so useful to take the time to get to know this technique, as it does afford us such a big jump in speed from playing the whole thing with our wrist, which feels kind of cumbersome and working through treacle in comparison. Now, as with any technique, you have to take this slowly. You have to take the time to get to know it before you're jumping in and throwing this on the kit. So if needs be, come and revisit the rest of this video once you've got that feeling good. But if you feel like you've got the hang of that and it's feeling consistent and in control on the pad, let's apply this to the kit in a few cool grooves. So first things first, let's put this on the hi-hat in a nice simple one and a two and a three and a four with a nice little funk beat underneath. Now for our second beat here, we're going to be moving over to the ride cymbal with a nice little 1 E and, 2 E and, 3 E and, 4 E and. We're going to be making the most of our little snap for that third note. We're going to shift it onto the bell. So we'll have ride, ride, bell, ride, ride, bell, ride, ride, bell, which gives this whole groove a real lift with that bell accenting the eighth note off beats.
Now this technique really comes into its own over there on the ride cymbal. We really reap the rewards of snapping in that third note as we pull it out on the ride bell. And hearing that bell on the off beats really does push the groove along. So for this final little beat here, we're really gonna make the most of how much this technique carries that beat forward on its own. We're gonna play a slightly more funky and syncopated pattern underneath. Now playing those slightly more syncopated patterns is slightly more difficult to lock in with this, but as long as that right hand is feeling really stable and reliable on that technique, then we can really lock this in and make this sound great. I love this beat. Now that really was a whole lot of stuff that we've just covered in that lesson. Now if this technique is new to you, then please do take the time just to practice it on its own before you're checking out those examples. But for those of you this is feeling comfortable, then take those examples, add in your own stuff, and really use this to get creative and unlock what you can really do with 16th note patterns just in one hand. I really hope you guys enjoyed this lesson and if you want to see more like it then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we hope to see you again soon.